Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Um, I need to build a couple of dummy loads, and I already have this guy, and this is a bird uh, dummy load uh, that is good for 500 watts um, at uh, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. It is a brute. Now it says 500 watts. I put way more than 500 watts into it. Um, I put 1500 watts into it. This darn thing must weigh 20 pounds. But where I need to go is outside and test some uh, coax cables. So for my purposes, this dummy load is not going to do the job. But I, And I need a couple more. Uh, in the past, I built dummy loads using... Um, Resistors like this, uh, these are 5 watt, 1000 ohm resistors. There are 20, um, let's see, these are, yeah, 1000 ohm, there's 20 in here. And they're 1000 ohms, so 20 into 1000 ohms, they're parallel, is 50 ohms. And in checking it with an ohmmeter, it measures about 49.5 ohms in transmitting into it. Um, it's okay to a certain frequency and then it gets real reactive and part of that is due to the wires that I used. Um, there are wires that become a significant portion of a wavelength as you get close to two meters and it gets real reactive. So the box I build during the break will be, um, the goal will be to have no inductor reactants, no capacitor reactants to try to eliminate both of those and have it be just a resistive load. Um, so what I'm going to do is take some rods uh, that look like this, uh, like that, they're copper, and then I'll parallel two of them like uh, railroad tracks and put the resistors in between. And then I'm going to slap some copper sheets on both ends to try to eliminate the inductance of this rod. I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to solder copper to it. So it'll be pretty ugly looking, but I'm hoping it'll, it'll work up to two meters. Find out more about that on the Nano VNA right after this break and during the break, which is going to be for me probably a couple of hours. I'll build the, uh, the dummy load. We'll see how it works. So stand by. Be right back in just a few seconds, your time, but a couple hours for me. Calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Okay. <laughs> the couple of hours that I thought it would take ended up taking a couple of days. And what I ended up doing was building more than one dummy load. Um, the, um, as it turned out, uh, the insides of my dummy loads ended up pretty ugly, and I, I'm hoping that they work well. Um, the first one I built was this one, and it was a box I had, um, and I've used it on a bunch of projects. It's just simply a, a box that had a relay in it. It was sold commercially for ham radio operators, and I've acquired a couple of them over the years at garage sales and things. So the resistors are on the inside, um, kind of in a circle, and I slapped copper on the top and bottom. Now that is just horrific looking, honestly. It, it, if you look at the solder, the solder uh, connections are good. They're not cold, but they're ugly. And I, no matter how hard I tried, and I built a couple this way, um, I couldn't make it look any better. So anyway, I'm hoping that with the copper uh, plate, if I can show that, that it will um, remove any inductance because uh, I've slapped that copper over the top of it. So we'll see how that goes. There are <laughs> there are uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. There are uh, 20 resistors, 1,000 ohms, parallel. 20 to 1,000 is 50. Uh, measuring this with just a plain old ohmmeter, it shows 49.3 ohms. 
So close enough to 50, but we'll see what the reactance does because the reactance will change that value. This one, yeah, it's a dummy load. And um, I put a fan on one side. Uh, there's an exhaust on the other. Um, yes, it's got a light bulb on top. And it's got its own little watt meter. Um, so it's a 50 microamp meter. I took a, a, a circular ferrite bead, put some wire around it, and that's and went through a 1 in 34 uh, up to this in through potentiometer. And son of a gun, I, I calibrated it for um, 500 watts full scale, and it's, it's really close. The light bulb, I do have a need for that, and I'll demonstrate that here in just a minute. Uh, in a subsequent video, I'm going to talk about pulse width modulation. And this seemed like a good way to, uh, to demonstrate how that happens. So the, the bulb can be unscrewed and it's out of the circuit. And we'll see how that looks on the, on the, uh, the VNA. Okay, let's jump over to the VNA and take a look first at the small dummy load. And then last to the larger dummy load with the light bulb. Okay, I've scanned the box from 3 to 30 megahertz. It's virtually flat with an SWR of about 1.05. So that's excellent. Let's see what happens when we go to uh, 2 meters. So I'll put in 148 megahertz and sweep this thing. Again, this is the small box with the copper. Uh, that's excellent. So a slight rise around 120, 30 megahertz. But still, that's only about 1.15 to 1. That's an excellent SWR curve. So again, um, it looks like the copper did the did the trick. Now, getting to 440 megahertz is going to be a whole different situation because just about anything will react there. Um, so let's sweep it and see what we get. All right, um, so it's about 1.7 to 1 at the worst. It's not terrible, but it's not going to be good enough for what most of us need to do. Um, basically, the box is good through about 2 meters, maybe 200 megahertz. There's a dip at 241 megahertz. Uh, that whole curve, although it looks a bit high, it's really not. It's about 1.15, 1 1.12 to 1, so uh, through 250 megahertz. So that's, that's really good. Now let's sweep the big box, and that will have the light bulb um, disconnected initially, and that will change... Um, when the light bulb is screwed in, because it's cold, it's going to present a very different impedance, a very different resistance. So um, scanning it with a nano via VNA may not tell us much. So let's um, do that now. Okay, it's better than I thought it would be. Again, it is virtually flat from 3 to 30 megahertz. So for HF, um, in that fan I've got inside, I've got a five 600 watt dummy load. Um, let's try this with screwing in the light bulb and see what, um, what happens with that. Okay, that's with the light bulb. Um, screwed in but cold so the reading will be different when it's got power going to it uh, this this particular curve has no value because it won't apply with the light bulb heating up so here we go let's uh, put some light on the subject and see what happens okay there's the uh, the filament is lit up uh, that's 25 watts roughly into the uh, uh, dummy load. I've got the blower going. I know it's making a lot of noise. So I'm going to crank up the power and see uh, what happens. Uh, SWR is 1.2 to 1, so that's really good. There's um, 50 watts. 
and the filament is actually moving around, so I can show that. Okay, there's the uh, linear amplifiers on. That is um, just about 100 watts at the moment. The linear is kind of the output again. Okay, there's 300 watts. So to summarize, um, I built the dummy loads that I needed, uh, the one with the light bulb for demonstrating, uh, demonstrating pulse with modulation, and the, um, the other one for going outside and, and doing some measurements on some coax cables. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please uh, subscribe. If you have, uh, also give a thumbs up. If it didn't work out for you, uh, do a thumbs down and let me know. If you have a question, uh, post that below. We'll do our best to answer it. 7-3 for now. I'm Jim, W6LG, your YouTube Elmer in Rockland, California. 7-3 from Smoky Rockland. You can hardly talk. It's so smoky. See you later. Bye.